Have you ever been mixing a song and gotten to a point in that mix where you're like, oh, I need to turn the vocals up. And you turn them all the way up to the maximum, maximum level. There's no more volume to go and they're still not loud enough. Or maybe it's the drums, maybe it's a guitar part, the bass could be another part of the recording. Whole point is you've hit that maximum point on some channel and there's still nowhere to go and it's still not loud enough. Ah, that's the worst, right? Well, that's happening because you're not mixing with any headroom in general. And today I'm going to teach you a foolproof way to make sure you always have headroom. And we're going to do that right now. So when you hear the term headroom, here's what it means. So let's look at the drum fader, for example. So right now you can see it's about in the middle, right? So everything above that is considered headroom. Now, if you watched my mixing videos in the past, you know that on GarageBand or in general, I like to start mixing with the drums first, okay? Um, they're one of the most critical sounds. You wanna make sure you can hear the kick and the snare and the drums in general, right? So I always, always, always start with the drum level first, and then I build up everything around that. This method that I'm about to show you is all about headroom. And the way that I ensure that I have plenty of headroom is when I start with the drums, I'm gonna set this at negative five dB. Right now it's at negative 4.3 because this song's been mixed, but in general, double click, negative five, boom. So that's where I would start, negative five dB. Then, you know, in general, I would have all this stuff muted out and turned all the way down. Now this song's mixed, so I don't wanna go too deep into this, you know, messing everything up thing, but. So I would start the drum section and I would listen to it at negative five dB. And then one by one, I would start bringing in the other instruments and the vocals, keeping in mind that the drums have to remain at the top of that mountain, okay? So here, I'll just do a little bit of a demo. Okay, so now we need a little bass. Okay, and I've already set this, so it's pretty good. So I'm gonna bring in a guitar part more guitar parts. We have a piano, got an organ, got an acoustic guitar. And all the vocals. Okay. So then after you bring in all these other elements, right? After everything's brought in, even though you've been keeping really careful track of making sure you could hear the drums, most likely you're gonna wanna turn the drums up a little bit more, right? So in this case, in this particular song, uh, it was negative 4.3. So I'm just gonna enter that in just because I know that's where it was. And I will say in this particular song, it was important to hear the drums because they are played with a brush, which doesn't have a ton of attack on the snare or the toms or the cymbals, right? So I wanted to make sure I had tons of headroom so I could actually have some space to work with when I, I knew I was gonna have to turn these drums up to be able to hear them. I would also add, this is a song from a client of mine. This is a guy named Mike Perinelli. What's up, Mike? Thank you, I'm using your song. Um, his, his songs have made it into a few of my videos for demo purposes. Um, but anyway, don't forget, I do record and mix and master for people. I play on your songs, whatever you need. GarageBandAndBeyond.com, there's a mixing inquiries page there with all of the details. Okay. So back to the lesson. So now I brought everything in and I know I need to bring the drums up a little bit more, like I said, so I did, negative 4.3, and here it is at the loudest section of the song. Splashing in the sunshine is fine. Okay, right? So that's what we sound like now. Now, one of the things gets a lot easier in GarageBand is mastering if you have left yourself the proper amount of headroom, okay? So what I want you to look at down here, this is my master channel output, if you don't know how to find this, go up to the track pull down menu, go to the second last one, which will say show master track. Mine says hide because mine is currently visible. Um, okay, so then you'll turn this on and it'll be all the way at the bottom. And now this meter is what I want you to read. You will see no red and we're gonna be the loudest section of the song. Splashing in the sunshine is fine. Okay, now look at the master output volume level up here at the top. Again, no red at all. Right, okay, so there's no red anywhere in those master output channels, okay? So now you can actually use the presets from GarageBand mastering section and they're not awful. 
So let's just call this one a pop song. No, let's call this rock. That's where I had it before. Let's stick with rock. Okay, so let's get into those plugins and take a quick look to see what we get to use here. Um, okay, so here we are. So it turns on an EQ, the multipressor, and a limiter. So let's, uh, let's only use those and see how we do, okay? So we're gonna go back to the loudest part of the song. Now, my favorite setting in the multipressor, just so you know, four band fast attack right here, fast attack four band. Um, that's a great one. It's a, it's just a good one. And it always makes stuff sound better and louder for sure. So we'll start with it off just so you can hear the difference. Okay, so now we're getting a little bit of red out of the meters and I'm okay with that, okay? So let's um, let's not do this compressor. Let's just try bumping up a little bit of the gain here, see if we can get a little bit more out of this. Okay, maybe we'll look at the EQ quickly. Basic little, you know, little bump in the high, little bump in the low, no big deal there. Um, but now, let me just turn this all off. Actually, let's get rid of the exciter. So I'm never gonna use that thing, I don't like it. Um, and let's listen to this, you know, I'll turn them on and off. Turn them on. So basically what I'm looking for now is just a little bit of red in the meters, right? So if we watch here. And even the meters on my uh, monitor station from PreSonus, everything is reading just the way it should. Now this is a hard thing to do mastering without real meters. I've made other videos about this. There are some free VU meters that you can download, um, you know, look around. In my last video about mastering, I actually gave a link. Maybe I'll do that again. Um, but anyway, there's some meters you can actually download for free that give you all of the units of measurement that you need for mastering. RMS being one of the most important ones. Yeah, if you can find a free meter with an RMS figure, that's what you really want for metering, uh, for mastering, okay? So that's the whole idea, you guys. It's all about starting at a low volume with the drums, if this, you know, in this case, that's where we're starting. If it's a song without drums, then you'll have to find some other instrument um, that will, you know, sort of be the benchmark that you'll work around. But the whole idea is starting down low and then building up as it goes, and again, never getting red in any of these meters that you just looked at, the master output meters, you don't want any red there. Um, using this headroom method will only make your mastering process easier because you've given yourself some headroom to work with, okay? The whole concept of like, it's gotta be louder and louder and louder, um, <clears throat> that's not really gonna happen in the mix stage, that's gonna happen in the mastering stage. Uh, that's that, okay? So you guys, if you have any questions, please, Leave them below in the comment section like every other video in the world. And, um, you know, if you like my channel and you like what I'm making, it really does help me if you hit the subscribe button. So I really appreciate it if you did. I do also have a Patreon page. If you guys are curious about that, it's patreon.com forward slash garage band and beyond. And those people get exclusive content. They get uh, early looks at videos. Um, I answer questions much quicker over there. And uh, in general, you know, you get my attention a lot more focused if you're a patron um just because that's what it comes with plus um, discounts on mixing and all that kind of stuff 
Uh, I think that's about it. And I really, really appreciate you guys watching. And um, yeah, leave questions below. I'll talk to you later. All right. Peace and love. Peace and love.